So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Liquid Layout panel. It's under the Window menu, under Interactive, Liquid Layout. And I'm going to go ahead and select the Page Tool, which is over here. And so it's the second one down here, the Page Tool. And the Page Tool has been around for a while because we've been able to do multiple page sizes in InDesign for several versions. I believe CS5 is when they introduced that. And so we've had this Page Tool, but the Page Tool kind of gets a, a little upgrade in, this, in CS6 and beyond. So it lets me look at liquid layout and see what's going to happen to the page when I make a change to the size of the page. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the page tool. I'm going to click on the page. And a couple of things I want to make sure. I want to make sure that I'm not seeing my master page overlay. Because if I do that, if I have a master page, it puts this blue line around it and any master page items show up. I don't really want that. I'm just going to go ahead and choose that just so that I can see what's happening with the liquid layout. And for this page, everything on this page is object-based. So when you create a liquid layout rule, every page has to have one rule applied to the whole thing. So I can't use, I have object-based and scale. I can't use scale on some items and object-based on other items on the page. So unfortunately, the whole page has to be governed by the same liquid layout rule. So in this case, I'm going to use object-based. And then I can click on each item individually. Right now, I just clicked on the page with the page tool. But I can come over and click on an object with the page tool. And I get these little funky handles that are here. And these are basically our liquid layout handles. And I can kind of see visually what's happening here. And I can also see over in the menu what's happening. So this item, this is a grouped item. I've just created this with some text and a, a little shape of a square. And I've put that together and I grouped it. And then I've given it a rule. And I've told it when I select this item with the page tool, I can come over here and tell it I want to pin it to the top and the right. And that's exactly what's happened. That's why when I see this other layout, you notice it's sitting in the same general area as it was in the vertical layout. So it's pinned to the top and the right. And that's because of the liquid layout rule I applied to that. So I jump back over here and select that again with the page tool. I can see that there's this sort of brown little, little clip here. I can say I can click that and it unpins it. So it went away over here. It's no longer pinned to the top. So I can either use the menu or I can use the actual visual uh, guides over here. So I've told it always sit to the top and the right of this layout. Now I want to see what happens when I do that. So if I unpin this, let's say it's just pinned to the right. I want to see what happens before I create a whole nother liquid layout or another alternate layout. I want to just go ahead and see visually what's going to do that. So by using the page tool, I have these four handles on the side. I can grab this handle and just start moving it. And I can kind of see, oh, that's what happens when I don't pin it to the top. It slid right off the top. And when I let go, it automatically just bounces back to the way it was. So what I want to do is say, OK, actually, let's pin that to the top. Now I'm going to grab that again and start pulling it. And now I see, oh, it's sitting right against the margins, just where I had it.